I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me are Lee Goring and Adam Rosenzweig, co-managing partners at Goring and Rosenzweig Associates. Thank you both for joining me today. It's our first time speaking. I thought you could begin by telling me a little bit about yourselves and about the firm. Uh, Goring and Rosenzweig is a, is a firm that that was established about two and a half years ago. I'm Lee Gehring, and uh, I established the firm with my long-term colleague, Adam Rosenzweig. And it's a firm that's dedicated to researching and investing in global commodity markets. Today, Lee, we're here at Mines & Money in New York. Earlier today, you gave a talk on copper. For those who might not be aware, how have we seen copper perform so far this year? And has its price movement been in line with your expectations? Copper had a, a very strong year in 2017, and in the, in the very beginning part of January, it hit a price of about $3.25 a pound. It has pulled back and actually has been one of the weaker metal stocks uh, this year. However, I should point out that the weakness that we're seeing now is, we believe, is nothing more than a pullback in a very large multi-stage bull market that is going to take place in the next five years. Yes, and in your talk, you, you gave quite a long-term perspective on the copper price. Can you briefly go over what has led us to this point? Yeah, of all the metals we follow, copper, we believe, has the, the, the most interesting and best supply-demand profile of any metal market out there today. What, what's going to happen in global copper markets is that incredibly strong demand which will be driven by two forces. One will be, what, what will be the, the, the desire to invest in renewables, because remember, renewables require a lot more copper intensity in their investment than standard hydrocarbon fuel plants. I'm talking about wind and solar farms here. That that demand will, will be layered on top of traditional, very, very strong demand that's gonna come from basically the, the emerging market. Not only China, but India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, each of which is entering their period of very rapid and intense copper consumption. So you have very strong demand, and on the supply side, we are running into long-term structural supplies of copper. We have a depletion issue in the copper business. You know, we have we basically lose, we calculate about 500,000 tons of copper supply a year through depletion, and the lack of very large, what I call mega projects coming on in line in the next five to seven years are few and far between. So we believe that, that you're going to have very, very strong demand that's going to basically collide with very, very weak supply. It's an incredibly bull story. Further to the supply side, so we've got supply actually dropping. What about grades? What are we looking at in terms of grades right now? Yeah, w one of the interesting things is that, uh, you know, what I mentioned depletion, one of the, the easiest way to measure that is the, the drop in the head grade. That is the amount of copper that's contained in the ore that's actually mined and then put through the mill. Uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing about a 2% drop in head grades per year over the last five to seven years. And that's accelerated from about a 1% drop that we saw from like 2005 all the way to 2012. And, you know, literally back in 2012, we were mining on a global basis. We calculate copper with about a 0.9% head grade. Today, we calculate you're down to about a 0.67 or something like that. So it's, it's been a significant drop and that, that head grade drop is dropping by about 2% per year. Now, looking a little more closely at demand, at this conference, copper has been designated an old-school battery metal. To what extent can investors expect battery demand to drive copper prices in the years to come? You talked a little bit about that, but let's hear some more. Sure, and uh, this, is, this is Adam Rosenzweig speaking now. Um, you know, the big demand push for copper as it relates to batteries won't necessarily come from the batteries themselves as opposed to cobalt or lithium, which, which will actually go right into the batteries, but rather uh, it'll be in the sort of larger push of electric vehicles and renewable power. Uh, an electric vehicle is three times more copper intensive than an internal combustion engine. And uh, as Lee was mentioning earlier, renewable power sources can be 30 to 40 times as copper intensive um, as, as a traditional gas or coal plant. So as you begin to make a push, and, and we s clearly have a uh, strong government and societal uh, desire to move towards 
uh, a certain amount of EV penetration backed by renewables, that's really going to drive the, the impact um, uh, on copper. You know, there, Charlotte, there's an irony here in that uh, uh, they, they say it's an old battery metal, but it, it's really probably the greenest of all metals that there is. So we've got all of these supply and demand factors adding up. What What is your prediction for prices? Where are we going to see prices go? Do you have a specific outlook? Pricing is always difficult, but mm. if we're in a real bull market, uh, you know, if you sat through my presentation, I talked about how we really turned bullish on copper markets back in uh, 2000. And at the time, copper was uh, approximately 75 cents. And what happened in that bull market cycle? We basically went from a bottom of about 60 cents reached in 2000 to a top of about $4.10 reached in uh, the beginning part of uh, 2006. So at a five-year period, you basically went up four and five and a half times in price. I wouldn't be surprised that, that something along that magnitude happens uh, in this bull market. We started at the bottom at a little below $2 back in the, in the first quarter of 2016. So I wouldn't be surprised that a, a target price would be anywhere between 7 to $10 in this cycle. It sounds like there definitely is an investment opportunity here. Should investors be considering stocks? And if so, which ones? What's the best way to invest in copper? It's, it's uh, one of the, the, there is a copper stock ETF out there that I believe that you can invest in. I think that would be one of the, the easiest way to do it. You wouldn't have to be involved with all the individual research that's required for all these names, which have all sorts of geological and, and, and national risk associated with them. So that's what I would recommend. And I do definitely like the copper equities. I think that they will be the best performers, but I think the copper stock ETF would be the best way for every, a individual investor to play it. And now, now is the time? I think now is the time. You came here to talk about copper, but I know you've got extensive knowledge about the resource space as a whole. What other commodities do you believe have potential in 2018? I think that the most interesting market for the rest of 2018 is going to be global oil markets. You know, we, we back in in January of 2017, we published a big piece outlining our view that that we were going to hit hundred dollar oil in 2018 at some point. We we were called crazy. A lot of people ridiculed us. We had a lot of people say you didn't know what we're talking about. But it's interesting that Brent right now is closing in on 80 already. So. You, the oil market is a market that's, that's classically out of balance. Demand is running about six to 700,000 barrels a day greater than supply. Uh, OPEC seems determined to keep with their production cuts, but you know that's becoming a non-issue because they're falling so far behind now that even if they were to reinstitute all the cuts made in 2016, the oil market would still day, stay in deficit. So we believe that Given the supply demand fundamentals, the fact that we keep drawing down inventories, which we will do through at least the next six months, that $100 oil price is still within our, our realm of possibility. And we think that, that oil-related equities offer a tremendous opportunity here. Okay, that's great. Are there any final points that you would leave investors with for this year? I think we made a classic cycle bottom in all commodities back in the first quarter of 2016. And the pricing of commodities versus financial assets have reached extremes that you've only seen a couple times in the last hundred years. You know, back in the, the late 1960s, early 1970s, and again back in 1990 to 2001. Both were times to be uh, an excellent time to be an investor in the commodity space. And we believe that investors are begin, being given that, that opportunity right now today. Okay, that is all from me. Thank you, Lee and Adam, for joining me. That was great. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network.